Hello everyone. Welcome back. I am Dr. Deepika Malik. In this session, we'll discuss fluorescence microscopy. This is also a type of light microscopy, just like bright field and dark field. Fluorescence microscopy is a powerful imaging technique used in various fields of science and research to observe and analyze fluorescently labeled specimens. It utilizes the phenomena of fluorescence where certain molecule fluorophores absorb light at a specific wavelength and then emit light at a longer wavelength creating a visible signal. This technique provides high sensitivity and specificity enabling the visualization of specific molecules and structures within cells, tissues and other biological samples. Fluorescence is popular because of the ability to achieve high specific labeling of cellular compartments. The images usually consist of distinct regions of fluorescence that is white over large regions of no fluorescence that is black as you can see in the image given which gives excellent signal to noise ratios. Now let us see the principle and working of epifluorescent light microscopy. The most commonly used fluorescence technique is called epifluorescence light microscopy where epi simply means from above. Here the light sources come from above the sample and the objective lens acts as both condenser and objective lens. Principle fluorophores these are molecules that can absorb light energy at a certain wavelength usually excitation and emit light at a longer wavelength known as emission. Fluorophores are often conjugated to specific molecules of interest such as antibodies or DNA probes. Example, fluorescein is optimally excited at a wavelength of 588 nanometer and emits maximally at 580 nanometer. Excitation light source. The specimen is illuminated with excitation light which is absorbed by the fluorophores and cause them to become excited to a high energy state. Common light sources include high pressure mercury or xenon lamps, LEDs and laser. Excitation filter. This filter allows only the excitation wavelength to reach the specimen ensuring that only the fluorophores are excited. As you can see here in the diagram there is a light source from which light is coming. After it hits the excitation filter only light of specific wavelength is allowed to pass to the specimen that is labeled with a certain fluorophore. Dichroic or dichromatic mirror or beam splitter. This mirror reflects the excitation light towards the specimen and allows the emitted fluorescent light to pass through to the detector. As you can see this green light coming from the specimen. Chromatic mirrors and filters can be designed to filter two or three specific wavelengths for imaging specimens labeled with two or more fluorochromes. This is known as multiple labeling. Then objective lens. The objective lens collects the emitted fluorescent light and focuses it onto the detector. Emission filter. The filter blocks the excitation light and allows only the emitted fluorescence to pass through to the detector. The excited fluorophores return to their ground state by emitting light at a longer wavelength known as fluorescence. Detector. Detectors such as photomultiplier tubes or charged couple devices capture the emitted fluorescence light and convert it into an electronic signal. Specimen preparation. Specimen preparation for fluorescence microscopy involves several critical steps to ensure that the target structures are effectively labeled with fluorescent molecules and that the fluorescent signals are detectable and accurate. Here is a general outline of the specimen preparation process. Selection of specimen. Choose the appropriate biological specimen based on your research question. This could be cells, tissues, organisms or other biological materials. Selection of fluorophores. Choose fluorophores that match the experimental needs such as the emission and excitation wavelengths are compatible with your microscope setup, the desired brightness and the availability of specific antibodies or probes. Fixation if necessary. If your specimen is not naturally fluorescent and you need to preserve its structure, fixation might be required. Use a suitable fixative to immobilize and stabilize the specimen's components. Common fixatives include formaldehyde or formalin, ethanol or methanol. Permeabilization. 
For cells and tissues, you might need to permeabilize the cell membrane or tissue sections to allow the entry of fluorescent molecules such as antibodies or dyes into the cell or tissue. This can be done using diffusion, microinjection or electroporation. Blocking to reduce non-specific binding of fluorescent molecules and to minimize background fluorescence, treat the specimen with a blocking solution, example, bovine serum albumin or BSA or normal serum. Labeling This step involves attaching fluorescent molecule or fluorophores to specific target molecule within the specimen. Common labeling techniques include direct labeling, fluorophores are directly conjugated to antibodies, DNA probes or other molecules that specifically bind to your target structures as you can see here in the diagram. Here's the cell and to the cell we have a primary antibody that is already labeled with a fluorophore. Indirect labeling Primary antibodies are used to bind to the target structures followed by secondary antibodies labeled with fluorophores that bind to the primary antibodies as you can see here in the diagram. The green one is the primary antibody and the blue one is the secondary antibody that is labeled with a fluorescent molecule. Genetic labeling. If working with live cells, genes encoding fluorescent proteins, example green fluorescent protein, or red fluorescent protein can be introduced into the cells through transfection. Here you can see in the diagram there is a promoter from where actually the transcription starts and a gene encoding fluorescent protein here green fluorescent protein which is added just before the gene of interest so that after transcription and translation the protein which we get is already having this GFP inside it which makes it easy traceable. Washing. After labeling, wash the specimen to remove unbound or non-specifically bound fluorescent molecules. Washing helps reduce background fluorescence. Microscopy and imaging. Place the labeled specimen on a suitable microscope slide and cover it with a cover slip. Use a mounting medium that preserves fluorescence and reduces photobleaching. Observe the specimen under the fluorescence microscope. Analyze the acquired images using appropriate software to study the distribution, colocalization that is presence of two or more different molecules residing at the same physical location in a specimen and intensity of fluorescence signals. Now let's discuss different types of fluorescent molecules. Fluorescent molecules also known as fluorophores come in a variety of types each with unique properties that make them suitable for different applications in fluorescence microscopy and other research fields. Fluorescent proteins example includes green fluorescent protein, red fluorescent protein, yellow fluorescent protein. Origin they are naturally occurring or genetically engineered proteins with intrinsic fluorescence. They are used for protein localization tracking and dynamics within live cells. Organic fluorophores, examples fluorescein, rhodamine, cyanin dyes like Cy3 and Cy5, Alexa fluor dyes, DAPI. Origin, synthetic small molecules with fluorescent properties. Applications include immunofluorescence, DNA and RNA staining, labeling specific molecules. Fluorescent membrane dyes, examples DIL, DIO, DID. These are lipophilic dyes that incorporate into cell membranes. Applications include labeling cell membranes, studying membrane dynamics. Fluorescent antibodies. These are the antibodies conjugated with fluorescent dyes. Applications involve immunofluorescence, protein localization, flow cytometry. Fluorescent calcium indicators. Examples include Fluo4 and Fura2. These are small molecules that bind to calcium ions and fluorese upon binding. Applications include monitoring intracellular calcium levels, studying cellular signals. Fluorescent pH indicators, examples BCECF, SNAF1. Origin, molecules that change fluorescence intensity with pH changes. Applications include monitoring intracellular pH and pH sensitive experiments. Fluorescent lipids, examples Nile red and body pie dyes. Origin, fluorescent dyes that interact with lipids. Application includes studying lipid metabolism and labeling lipid droplets. 
Quantum dots. A recent addition to the extensive list of probes for imaging is the quantum dot. Quantum dots do not fluoresce per se, means they do not fluoresce by itself, but they rather are nanocrystals of different sizes that glow in different colors in laser light. The colors depend on the size of the dots and they have the advantage that they are not photo bleached. Here you can see in the diagram. These are quantum dots of different sizes and on absorbing the blue light, all the quantum dots of different size emit light of different colors. Then fluorescent DNA and RNA probes example includes molecular beacons as you can see here in the diagram. In the closed state that is referred to as molecular beacon probe, the quencher molecules efficiently absorbs and dissipates the energy emitted by a fluorophore. As a result, the fluorescence of the fluorophore is quenched and no detectable fluorescence signal is emitted. But later on, after this beacon opens up and hybridizes with the target DNA molecule, the quencher is very far off from the fluorescent molecule and now the signal from this fluorophore can be detected. It includes short DNA or RNA sequences with attached fluorophores. Applications include detecting specific DNA or RNA sequences or gene expression analysis. Ideal properties of fluorescent molecules High quantum yield Fluorophores with high quantum yield emit a large proportion of absorbed photons as fluorescence. This results in brighter and more easily detectable signals. Brightness, bright fluorophores generate strong fluorescence signals even at low concentrations, allowing for sensitive detection and reducing the risk of photo bleaching. Stability and photostability. Idle fluorophores are stable, resisting degradation and changes in fluorescence intensity over time. Photostability ensures that the fluorophores do not lose their fluorescence quickly when exposed to excitation light. Resistance to photo bleaching. Fluorophores that resist photo bleaching allow for longer imaging sessions without significant loss of signals. Photo bleaching, sometimes referred fading, is a photochemical alteration of a fluorophore molecule such that it permanently is unable to fluoresce. Ease of conjugation, fluorophores should be easily conjugated to biomolecules like antibodies or DNA probes without affecting their binding properties. Compatibility with biological samples, fluorophores should not interfere with the normal behavior of biological molecules and should be compatible with various sample types, cells, tissues and organisms. Multicolor compatibility, Fluorophores with distinct emission wavelength allows for multicolor imaging without significant spectral overlap. Cell permeability for live cell imaging. Cell permeable fluorophores allow the visualization of intracellular structures. Specificity. Fluorophores should bind specifically to their target molecules without non-specific binding or cross-reactivity. pH stability. Fluorophores that maintain their fluorescence across a range of pH values are valuable for intracellular studies and dynamic interactions or experiments. Minimal cytotoxicity. Fluorophores should have minimal impact on cell viability and function, especially in long-term live cell imaging studies.